So hello, it's the seventh birthday of the product community. Actually, we created the product community in Paris in February seven years ago, and there was something like 10 people in the room, and now actually we are pretty full up. So thank you for, for being here. I, I've been a product manager for the last 18 years, and I guess that even as a kid, I wanted to work in technology. Uh, but never have I ever told my parents Mom, Dad, when I'm a grown-up, I want to create Jira tickets. Because that's what I did want to do. I wanted to make a change. I wanted really to create something different, something that would make a change on people. And I guess that I wanted to be that guy. And don't lie to yourself, you want to be that guy also. You want to create something really different, to create a new path, to change the rules of the game. And in technology, usually, a lot of people fantasize about one word when you talk to changing the rules. Disruption. Everybody fantasizes about that. And that, that's amazing how people fantasize about the great part of that, raising billions, becoming a billionaire. But usually, if you ask them, how would you go from zero to disrupting something, they absolutely don't know. They never even ask themselves what could go wrong in the process. So let's imagine for one second that your product can give a superpower to your users. Okay? Let's imagine that this superpower is the ability for your user to see the emotions of the other human beings. Okay? You see they're stressed, happy, sad. And imagine that this product can actually change how people, how people feel. What do you think your users will do with that? Do you think they will do great things, for example, and make everyone happy in the room? Or do you think that make people be sad and then sell them something to make them happy? Do you think that insurance companies would be happy to show that you're perfectly healthy? Or would they use it to actually not cover people that are not healthy at all? I created that product. I did. It was actually 10 years ago. And I had in my hands the possibility to create that. And I had in mind that I didn't really know if I had to. And that's what I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you about the message journey between having this idea and actually selling the company to NASA to protect it. So what I wanted to do initially was that. I thought I could change the world. And as every product story, it starts with what people call a vision. You know, a vision is about seeing opportunities and blah, blah, blah. Um, that's actually the truth. I was saying possibilities where people didn't see anything. Using a technology that has been there for decades, but thanks to technology creating products based on the platform. But the hard thing about that, the hard thing people don't think about when you talk about disruption is, where do you start? You have a new technology, you want to disrupt the market, where do you start? Do you start on entertainment because you think that you can create immersion? You, do you think that you could actually sell something to an insurance company or entertainment at all? I didn't know. I was absolutely stunned by all the possibilities in front of me, but I didn't know where to start. So with my partner, we thought that we should start with a market where people were supposed to share the same mission we wanted to change how people would behave. We wanted to create something good. So we started with healthcare. We met doctors from every specialty that you could imagine. Okay? Medical doctors, classical ones, people like Dr. House, you know, on diagnosis. We did something with pain doctors. We tried every doctor there was. And that's where we learned the first lesson. Disruption is not about technology, it's about people. 
So imagine that you're telling to a doctor that you have a way to change how they diagnose things using something that is here. It's called the autonomous nervous system. It's a black box of your body. They know about it. They just don't exploit it. Imagine that you tell all those doctors that maybe they've diagnosed things wrong for years. Do you think they're happy about that? Saying, hey, Fabrice, <laughs> you're the man. Or are they scared? They were scared. They thought that what we were willing to do with this, burn the house down. In a way, we were endur sorry, endangering them. We were telling them, not that we could replace them, but that we could show things that they were unable to see. Doctors are people that I pay that much because they master what they do. They have a knowledge you don't have. I was telling them that I had the knowledge they didn't have with just technology. So what we received was not hope, it was hostility. And to be frank with you, when you start doing something on healthcare and people tell you about all the things that could go wrong for them and not for the patients, well, it's like a punch in the stomach. It took us two years to stop with healthcare, two years seeing people and people and people and having always the same answer at the end, which was, I don't think it's possible. So we thought, okay, let's change the market. Let's find a market that is not that far from healthcare, where we could do great things. Puppies. That's the puppy moment of the presentation. And th that was pretty um, a part of luck. Uh, we went to see a vet and we asked him questions because my partner's cat had a problem, health problem. And we asked them, um, if you had the possibility to see the emotions of a, a cat or a dog, would you be happy with that? And they said, well, actually, as a vet, I'd like to know what's happening in his head when he's doing this. They definitely don't know. So they say, would you be able to make a cat speak? To make me understand how they feel? Are they scared? Are they angry? Do they want to kill me or not kill me when I'm approaching them? So they want us, us to take a cat and make him speak. And we thought we could. Because a cat has an ANS, an autonomous nervous system, just like you and me. So, let's do this. Let's find a problem to solve. And actually, the problem to solve appeared in a pretty not that cool situation. We were with that vet, and two cats arrived. One old one, and a kitten. The old one has a health issue because he was old. The kitchen has been smashed by a car. And he had to do surgery on both of them. So we asked him, could we use our sensor just to see what's happening? And he said, yeah, sure, of course. So we did what we call the vital diagnosis. Would the cat die or not? But we didn't tell the answer to the vet. And we ask them, okay, with your experience, he has been a vet for 20 years, do you think they're gonna live or die? And he said, no, based on my experience, that should be okay. That should be okay, they will live. We gave him an envelope, and in the envelope, there was a vital diagnosis that we had on the sensor, so you can open it whenever you want. So he, he operated both cats. And the day after, both died, the kitchen and the old one. And in the envelope, we are said that they were going to die. And you don't want to be right in this kind of situation. And actually, I have a cat, so I don't want to be right on that. And you say that, how can you do this? But I can do this because I have a sensor, I have an app, and I can actually see what's happening inside the cat. 
And then we say, okay, would that be worth anything for you? So yeah, that would be great to see if cats are going to die. Same here. I imagine that, you, who owns a cat actually? Okay, imagine you own a cat and you go to see a vet and the vet tells you, thanks to this little sensor and application made by the startup, your cat is going to die and I absolutely won't do an operation on him. How would you react? Okay. Problem to solve, yeah, worth paying for, absolutely not. We're creating something marvelous, but actually people wouldn't want to pay for this. But there were a lot of people that had ideas of actual markets that would be paying for. There were investors. We are approached by a lot, a lot of people. Classical investors, but corporations too. Insurance companies, car companies, banks. I, I remember a special rendezvous I had with an entertainment company, a French one. Uh, we went to La Défense, we were in London, and we went to La Défense, and we were welcomed by three guys with very expensive suits and very expensive smiles. <laughs> and we did a little demo what we could do. We were working on immersion, the flow state, for people that understand that. We, we, we actually can see if you are in the flow state or not, the state of immersion. So we do the, the demo, and they say, that's marvelous, we'd like to work with you. Okay. What do you want to do with this? Oh, we want people to get addicted to what we do. With a smile, the very expensive one. Is that, I'm sorry, you want people to get addicted. That, that's the word you used. Yes. Have you seen anyone with a real addiction, you know, to drugs or to alcohol and things like that? Yes, but that's not the same thing. But actually it is. Well, you understand, we create free-to-play games and we want people to come because that's free and then we want them to spend a lot of money because so we can get rich. And we say no. We just say no, we won't do this. And the guy didn't understand. They looked at me as if I was the dumbest guy on earth. I'm giving you money, you know French guy, money, money, so you can create a product for me, understand? And say, no, we won't do this, because it was not in our vision. So remember the product vision is your, you see an opportunity when people see nothing. But product vision is this. It's also refusing a future when your principles are dead. So when you say stick to your vision, stick to this. It's not worth killing your principles for a product. So the guys say, I still don't understand. And we had to find a way to make him explain why we were thinking that the product he wanted us to create was toxic. So we used three criteria. The first one is actually, is it designed to be international, internationally deceitful? You're lying to your user. So every time you want to sell him a car saying it's going to change his life, you're lying to your user. Telling me it's free and then you want me to play and you're going to use all the dark patterns to make me pay is intentionally deceitful. The second one, do I trick the user into something she wouldn't do otherwise? That's plain simple. It's manipulation. Every game you play, from Candy Crush to Farmville, for those who knew Farmville, is full of these. The third one, does that disproportionality benefit to one stakeholder? And usually that's the company. So we said, well, actually you have the three criteria. You're the winner. You want us to create the most toxic product ever. So no, thank you, but no. The guy was angry. And when I say angry, we received death threats. Real death threats. The first time you think that's a joke. 
and then you receive more death threats by mail, your servers are attacked, your car is crashed during the night, and even one day, we arrived, so that's not the real photo, I'm not Japanese, the real photo is in the ends of the London Metropolitan Police. Our office was ransacked. We didn't even have a website, a public one. We killed everything because we didn't want to be found. Nobody could find the address, but they found it anyway. And there were people that wanted to work with us or didn't want us to work with the competitors. I was really scared. Okay, I'm fine to say I'm the brave guy here, but still talking about this, I will, I'm a bit emotionally charged. And at the end, after everything, so many threats, I thought, okay, I think that people think we want to do this. I think people wanted this either to create a weapon against the users, I thought we were creating a weapon against us, against them. And sincerely, that's hard to swallow. We were not creating weapons. We didn't want to create a weapon. We had in mind that we couldn't do this. But do you really have the choice if people think you are creating a weapon? That's what positioning is about. That's what people think you are, what they believe you are. That is your position on the market. That's exactly why Colgate creating lasagna and it did work. Yes, they did create a lasagna. You can say Colgate lasagna on Google. That's a great moment. You can imagine two space, you know? Everyone imagines two space doing the lasagna? Okay, I'm not the only one. Actually, we were that close from stopping everything. Um, I was that close from being depressed, personally. It never happened to me. Uh, everyone that works with me knows that pretty energetic guy, pretty positive guy. I was really that close from saying, stop, stop. Just put everything in, in the back of the garden and forget it. And actually, um, during a dinner, we discussed with a guy in London, and we were talking about sensors. Because the basic of what we were doing was actually sensor, then algorithms, and then an application. And we told them, we don't have any provider to create what we want. And we had, had had talks with people in South Korea, in the US, even in Russia. And he told us, well, I know a company in the Netherlands, it's in Eindhoven, and what they do is they create sensors. So maybe it could be worth a shot. So with my partner, we said, okay, that's the last one, the last chance, the last rendezvous. We go, we see them, and if it doesn't work, we stop it all. So we went there, we took the car, took the ferry, went to Eindhoven, did a little demonstration, and Everybody stayed silent, just like you are, for several seconds. You know, in French we say, an ange passe, an angel is passing. For me, it was the angel of death. And then one guy said, do you want to work with the NASA? Sincerely, I looked at that, okay? <laughs> and then say, say, you joking? Say, Say no, no, actually, with a real NASA, you know, it's not actually a, another name or massa or anything. It was a real NASA. And say, were you telling me, guys, seriously? You making fun of me? And say, no, we, we, we sold a sensor to NASA, and they have a, a, a real problem, which is that they don't have any way to assess the ability of astronauts to take a decision when they are in critical situations. And say, Okay, let's meet the guys because I have everything pretty free my agenda for the following five years, so I can make an appointment. So we went to Houston, we met the guys, they told us, well, you know, if an astronaut takes a bad decision, it costs us billions in human lives. We don't know what happens in space. 
We know that people that has been in couples for 20 years fall in love. We don't know what's going to happen if we send people to the moon or if we send people to Mars. So could you please, please, French guy, create a product so we could assess the ability of someone to take a critical decision? So we said yes. Um, it took us one year to sell the company. It took us one year because NASA is a budget that is presented by the President of the United States to the American Senate in November. We had the first discussion with them in June 2013. We missed November 2013. We had to wait for one year without the power to do anything on it. So I went back to Paris. I created the product community. It was the product tank initially in their LPC and PCX. But in the deal, we said, we're going to sell you the technology only if you protect it. The condition is, you use the technology for the NASA, but you don't sell it afterwards. You protect it. And they said yes. So definitely, I never, ever, have told my parents, I want to create your ticket. But I guessed, maybe I said only once, I want to work with the NASA. So that's not because I was competent. That was about luck, real luck. So it's hard to find the right problem was paying for without harming the user. So what do you think we should do as product managers? Well, there are several things. You can use it, not use it. That's based on my personal experience. The first one that we should stay humble. We have a power on users. Not only on the planet, just like Alexander said. We have a direct power by the choices that we make on how people behave. We should stay away from those guys. Those guys sell you digital weapons. And after, they sell you a book to tell people not to be distracted. So it's selling the coronavirus and then the remedy, but just for you, not for the others. I really hate that guy. That's my Will Wheaton, my personal one, for those who know the Big Bang Theory. Don't be data informed. No, be data informed. Don't be data driven. Don't think that data is the compass. Is the compass. It's not the map. Data is here to help you go in the right direction, but you are supposed to define the direction. And beware objectives, OKRs, and things like that. It could turn you into a digital sociopath. Everybody knows about the Milgram experiment, 1960-1962. OKRs are an authority, so you can have an authority bias. Say you're doing that because it's in your OKRs. Plus 5% engagement. All the guys from Twitter, from YouTube, from Facebook, that people take an example, are just people that were led by objectives in the wrong directions because it was great for the North Star metric. DAU, MAU for Facebook, watch time for YouTube. You are in the same situation in your jobs. That's no different. It's not because you're not working at Facebook that you're not harming your users by following these. Measure the impacts, not only the environmental one. What is the impact on the individuals? What is the impact on the family of your users? Are you isolating them by what you do? Measure the impact on their professional lives. Think about all the people that you're using within your product, all the APIs. What are they doing? Follow the money. Based on how they make money, you can know if people have a good or a bad impact. Uber is just one example. Act accordingly to your moral compass. Mine is this. It's up to you. That's mine. I don't tell you to copy-paste it. Copy-paste it if you want, okay? 
I won't make you pay for this. If you are others, I'd be delighted to add them here. The best question to ask yourself is this. What could possibly go wrong? It works with this image too, actually. This one is great. Huh? <laughs> yeah. What could go wrong? <laughs> so in conclusion, it's not because we can do it that we should do it. Thank you. Do you have questions you're in French or in English? We can take the picture and ask questions afterwards. Don't be shy. I killed the party. Yay. <laughs> okay, apéro tout le monde? Oh. Ah, une question. Tu t'es fait que des ennemis là. so uh, are you still uh, are you still uh, working with sensors and uh, what are your new products? since you are so good at making them? Um, so actually, I left the company to work in them. Sorry. I left the company to when I sold it. I didn't want to live in the United States, which was actually a criteria to work with NASA. And my wife didn't want to. She didn't even want to work in Paris. Uh, so actually, we live in St. Cloud, which is not really Paris, which is really which is hard to negotiate, but I won. So we didn't want to go there, uh, actually. Um, the second thing was that we wouldn't have the, the control on it. And we knew it was going to be protected. But it depends really on the United States. And working with the United States is not something which is <laughs> actually easy. That's why I cannot tell you a lot about the technology. Because I really like you, but they're going to kill me and then kill you afterwards. <laughs> and I don't want to sue Donald Trump, because I don't think I'm going to win. Or maybe. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not working in Sensons anymore. I uh, left for the company, work at a company called Sightrade. Then I became the head of product and growth at Deezer. And I am the happy CPO of Tiga. For it's been for two years. Um, okay. But because it's recorded. How can you be sure that NASA will protect your product? And I have to kill you. Uh, <laughs> you'd never have a guarantee, based, based on their status. So as long as Donald Trump doesn't change the status of NASA, uh, they are unable to sell a technology by themselves. And that was actually something which is written in the contract I was actually that high considering all the paper. And I even studied low, I didn't really understand everything. <laughs> but yeah, I have a guarantee as long as Donald Trump doesn't change the status of NASA. We wouldn't have done that. It was actually Barack Obama on that day. So maybe I was more confident. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> Another question? You can ask me questions afterwards during the APRO if you want, okay? Once? You sure? Sure. No regrets? Okay. Okay, well, thank you a lot. <laughs> uh, if you want to see what the sensors looked like, it was actually that. It was not beautiful at all. That was the V3. And we're looking for the V4. It was actually a ring, just like the one I have on my finger. Now I have to kill everyone. <laughs> <laughs>
Euh, merci beaucoup, merci, euh, merci Fabrice, euh, merci euh, Alexandre pour ces deux présentations. Je pense que c'était euh, très inspirant pour tout le monde. Euh, je voudrais juste, avant qu'on passe à l'apéro, euh, juste derrière, je voudrais juste vous partager, on a mis en place un feedback, feedback wall juste derrière vous. Donc si euh, vous avez des retours à nous faire sur cette présentation, les autres, l'organisation, euh, ou des idées de, de sujets, etc., que vous aimeriez bien voir aborder ici. On est tout à fait preneur, donc euh, n'hésitez surtout pas euh, à mettre un petit post-it. Euh, on remercie également la cabane film donc, qui, euh, qui, qui nous propose euh, chaque meet-up euh, du, euh, du contenu qui est disponible en vidéo sur euh, notre chaîne YouTube et euh, prochainement peut-être euh, sous d'autres formats. Euh, voilà, on va passer à. Et également, et évidemment, euh, LPC, du coup, euh, en juin, également, je ne sais pas si euh, vous l'avez reçu, mais euh, il y a un questionnaire euh, auquel vous pouvez participer, donc qui est disponible sur, sur les pages de, de LPC. Euh, voilà, je crois que j'ai tout dit, on va pouvoir passer à l'apéro. Euh, je vous propose, pour, euh, je crois qu'il y a pas mal de nouveaux dans la salle, on le fait assez régulièrement, mais, euh, mais ça marche toujours bien, je vous propose de vous, vous retourner vers votre voisin de droite que euh, vous ne connaissez pas forcément et euh, que vous vous présentiez et on peut passer à l'apéro. Merci beaucoup. Merci.